everyone, it's Jessie from Bear Flower Farm. This year, in my first year of growing tulips, I grew 15 varieties of tulips, and I grew them through both hydroponically forcing them, forcing them in soil crates, as well as growing them in the field the traditional way. Now, this was actually a very uh, well-requested video from multiple people asking me to do basically a review of all the varieties I grew and what I would grow next year. Now, one of the things to note is that there are a ton of tulip varieties out there. There's something like over 3,000 registered tulip varieties. So when I go through my 15, I am going to be merciless because there is no reason to grow a tulip again that you are lukewarm about because there are just so many other varieties out there. Now, of course, with me in this review, we're gonna get into the weeds. I try to quantify things a little bit, give the varieties a ranking system, and we're gonna talk sometimes high level about the class of tulips or the family of tulips, right? So for example, I grew a Mystic Van Eyck. Well, the, man, the Van Eycks have different types of varieties in there. So there's the Mystic one, there's Salmon. So some of the stuff that I talk about will also be relevant for other, I guess, sister tulips in that family. So it might also be relevant for you if you're not looking at the particular variety that I'm growing, but you're looking at that family as a whole. So let's get started. I want to talk about the five criteria that I use to rank or rate these tulips. So the first one is curb appeal. And that's really just, does the tulip look good to me personally? The second one is stem length. So there are certain types of varieties that are just going to have longer stem lengths and certain varieties that are not. So for example, the impression series typically has longer stem lengths. Things like Foxy Foxtrot tend to have shorter stem lengths. So especially if you're selling to florists, this is quite relevant, but I tend to think of it as even if you're selling to retail, we're not looking to make tiny mason jar bouquets, right? So if you're buying varieties that all typically have long stem lengths, and then you throw in a couple of varieties that are gonna have short stem lengths, how are you gonna use that in a bouquet, right? So I think that's also very important to consider. The third is florist appeal. And the fourth is retail appeal. So there is a difference between the two because typically the color preference is going to be different between the two types of customers. Specifically florists, especially if they're doing event work, are going to want more blushy, peachy, muted tones, right? We're talking about pastel palettes, white. Retail typically they want brighter colors, right? So think about like a farmer's market, you've got the bright reds, the yellows, the purples, the oranges, attracting people to your stand. I found that that is particularly true, especially in the florist co-op that I sell in. So I'll talk a little bit more about my experiences there. Um, and then last but not least, profitability. So what I did was I looked at um, a bunch of different wholesalers, what they are selling their bulbs for wholesale. So when I say wholesale, I mean in crates of 500, 550, 600, even 1,000. I took an average of that bulb cost and then I looked at what I could fetch per stem. Um, on average, so between both hydro forcing and field tulips, and then basically, um, you know, looked at what that margin was going to be. So for each of these five criteria, I assigned a score of either one, two, three, four, or five. So five being the highest score you can get, one being the lowest. So the top score any tulip could get would be a 25 out of 25. And then I ranked the tulips based on that. And the good news was that that quantitative ranking really matched up to what my gut was telling me, but I just have a little bit more detail behind it in terms of doing this video to share. So the way that the ranking ended up breaking out was I had three groups. I had the first group, which was, I need to grow these again. I need to buy bulbs for these. The second group was, they were good, but you know, if I don't get bulbs for these, it's not the end of the world. And it could be because, you know, the bulbs are too expensive. It could be because, you know, there was just something that was slightly off about that tulip. And then the third group is just a group that was like, great to try this year, but not going to try it next year, right? So as I said, there's a ton of varieties out there. There's really no need for me to belabor growing something that I'm not super thrilled about. So Let's start with the first variety. Um, and the reason why I'm doing this video right now is because I still have some tulips that I can uh, show you in terms of how they look when they're developed and mature. So the first one is Alibi. Now, Alibi is this stunning 
um, Triumph Tulip. So it is a single. What I love about Alibi is how big it gets. I mean, this head, when it opens, is going to be about three inches. It starts off from this like pale purple with a little bit of green veining, and then it gets deeper purple, purple over time. And I've had CSA customers tell me that this tulip was amazing to watch unfold. And what's so great about a tulip like this is that it has both appeal to florists as well as retail customers. So it has very sturdy, long stems, right? So sturdy stems are really important because it makes a difference when you're working with them, when you're transporting them. I would say that the stem length on this, I cut off about this much. So Alibi wins on all of those fronts, plus the fact that this is a very profitable tulip. So on average, I am finding that bulbs are going here for 29 cents. And of course, this is wholesale pricing, right? So you're buying at least 500 at a given time, 29 cents per bulb. When you sell these, I'm able to get at about $1.55 wholesale to florists. So retail, I am typically charging by the bouquet. So it's not necessarily by variety, but when I charge by the bouquet, I'm getting anywhere from $1.65 up to $2.50 if I'm winter forcing the stems, right? So this becomes a very profitable tulip because getting a bulb under 30 cents is actually pretty reasonable. And one thing to note is that the bulbs that I'm talking about are 12 plus sizes. So, so um, a lot of times, you know, when you buy bulbs on clearance, they won't necessarily be size 12. Sometimes they'll quote you size 11, size 12. 12 is a really good size and it produces this type of head. So that's the first one in my must have. The second one in my must have is a tulip that I no longer have. So I'm going to put a picture up here. It is called Verona Sunrise. It is a beautiful double tulip. It's got pink blushy tones. Again, with this kind of color palette, very appealing to both florists as well as uh, retail customers. It also has very long stems. I would say that the stems are a little bit less thick and therefore less sturdy than Alibi, but still very workable, very usable. I only had three bunches to offer at my first co-op florist market. They were snatched up in pre-orders immediately. In fact, I they were the tulip that I sold out um, first before anything else. So this tulip is a little bit less profitable and therefore ranks a little bit lower than Alibi because the bulbs are a little bit more expensive. So when I did the math, the bulbs are 42 cents on average. Um, on the lower end, you know, you're looking at 37 cents. On the higher end, you're looking at 45 cents. So that's how I got to the 42 cents. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, definitely a tulip that I want to grow again because it just has such mass appeal. The third tulip is Columbus, and I have also run out of these tulips. So I hydroforced Columbus as well as grew them in the field. They, again, went very quickly at that florist co-op market. I still have a few left in a refrigerator that I'm going to use for um, a committed order next week. But this is a classic tulip that a lot of people are aware of. And because it is so popular and people are, or I guess the farmers in the Netherlands are able to grow it, it's actually a very cheap bulb. So on average, the bulbs are about 32 cents. This is a tulip that I would definitely recommend growing if I were you. It just, it opens up beautifully. It's got a lot of layers. It doesn't even look like a tulip, right? So you've got that mass appeal again to both florists and retail. It's great for event work. It's great to put into a bouquet and you'll really wow a lot of your customers. The one minor downside is that the stem length is not as great in my experience as Verona Sunrise and as Alibi, but it is long enough and it is very much workable for a normal bouquet. So because of all that, you know, that is tied with Verona Sunrise, but you know, pretty much in the must have category, especially with a price that is very difficult to beat bulb wise. I will say that it is very difficult to find a bulb that is in the low 30 cent range, if not high 20 cent range mark um, for a double like a Columbus.
And last but not least in my must grow category is Ad Rem. So I do have a stem of Ad Rem. This is a really, really big <laughs> tulip. This is a Darwin hybrid, which makes it really good for perennializing if that is your thing. But when this opens, this, I think I once, you know, measured it and it was four and a half inches. It is crazy, crazy big. And it starts off as a much lighter orange and it gets to a more saturated orange, almost like a fiery red. You can see over here though, it actually has some sun scalding spots. So it was really, really hot last week. And the problem with, I guess, this variety is that it is a little bit more prone to those sun scouting spots, but still a very reliable tulip, very sturdy stems, very long, like the Alibi. And again, the reason why this makes it to the top is because even though it has more retail appeal than florist appeal, I have actually sold consistently bunches to a florist. Um, another local florist was also interested in buying these. And then the price is also very, very reasonable. So on average, we're looking at 30 cents a bulb. So very close to Alibi at 29 cents. And again, you know, these can be perennialized. So um, that rounds out the must grow uh, category. So I have already pre-ordered Verona Sunrise as well as Columbus. I did not pre-order Alibi and Ad Rem because um, I will be perennializing some in the field. And, uh, you know, ordering 500 at a given time is a lot, especially for a smaller scale farmer like me. So I'll talk a little bit more about that, but I have enough in the field where I feel like I'll be able to get enough for what I want for retail bouquets, you know, in the spring next year. All right, so now we get to this middle category of would grow again if the, if, you know, the stars line up, but would not be upset if I didn't grow again. Um, the first one is Dream Touch. So Dream Touch, I don't have right now, so I'll put a photo up here, is what I realized a coveted variety. So when I put on Instagram that I was growing this, I got multiple messages from various flower farmers asking, where did you get these bulbs? And I had gotten them from Leo Burby. They were honestly a little bit more on the expensive side, but they looked really cool. And what I found out was that these bulbs are now very, very hard to procure for a normal retail customer because a lot of the bigger um, growers apparently are gobbling up these bulbs and there's really none left for the rest of us. Now, that being said, I saw it being offered in a couple of places. Now, just because it's being offered doesn't necessarily mean that it will be um, like it will come to fruition, right? Because there's crop failures, there's over or under projections of how much people have to sell. So it is very possible that, you know, in a couple of months, even if I ordered Dream Touch, I would not get it. So that being said, Dream Touch is averaging 58 cents a bulb, which is definitely on the high end for wholesale. So on the lower end, we've got 48 cents. And then on the higher end, we've got uh, 67 cents per bulb. And that 67 cents is of a crate of 600. And the 57 cents is, or sorry, the 48 cents is in a crate of 1000, right? So you have to order a lot just to get that 48 cents. Now it scored a five off of curb appeal, stem length, Florist appeal, retail appeal, it just did not score as high in the profitability. And that's what brought it down to that middle category. The next one is Icoon. This is what Icoon looks like. It is a double, it, it opens very big. And it is predominantly red with streaks of yellow. I hydroforced this and I grew this in the field. This is a tulip that if I grew again, I probably would not hydroponically force. I would grow in the field because my experience with hydroforcing was that this head would actually start drooping. And I think what I chalked it up to was that the stem strength was just not as strong for whatever reason, hydroponically forcing. I mean, it could have been like a one-off for me and other people were fine because I have seen other people hydroponically force it and, you know, they didn't report the same problems as me. But you can see that right now the stems are like, you know, this head is very sturdy. It's very straight. Um, but, you know, I definitely had bouquets going out where by day three, day four, it went, whoop. 
So um, yeah, and you know, at the end of the day, this is like a fiery red color, which has more of a retail appeal than florist appeal. So I had a hard time selling this at the florist uh, co-op. I think I sold one bunch there and I sold one bunch to my local florist. So not impossible, but it was not def it was not like a Verona sunrise where, you know, immediately it went. So from a profitability standpoint, these bulbs are, you know, kind of middle range, I would say. On average, you're looking at 34 cents a bulb, which is relatively reasonable. And, you know, I'm able to fetch maybe about $1.80 a stem off of this. So from a profitability standpoint, you know, puts it into like a middle range category versus some of the other varieties that I grew. The third one in this category is a Van Eyck. It's called Mystic Van Eyck. I am out of these, so I'll put a photo up here. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous tulip, in my view at least. It's got this like smoky mauve, salmony pink color, and over time, it actually fades into more of like a vintagey type of pink, like a very muted tone pink. What I love about this uh, tulip, which is also what other people hate about it, is that it opens. It opens really quickly, really big. So that makes it actually a little bit more difficult to work with. But the good news is that if you pick it at the right stage, it will close again at night as, or when it gets cooler. So you are going to get that vase life off of it. Some people, I think, just freak out because it blows open so quickly and they think that that tulip's done. But when, you know, the temperatures get cooler and gets darker, it does close up again. It's a very statement type of tulip for a single. It is huge. Now, the one thing, so, you know, we, we've covered, it's a big bloom. It's great color. So therefore great appeal to both florists and retail. Um, the stem length is amazing, very sturdy too. The downside of this tulip is that for whatever reason, if you don't have any cooler space or you ran out of cooler space and you had to store a little bit warm, it does not store well warm. So what I found was that I had harvested a whole crate and I put it in my basement, which is dark and cool, but it's still like, you know, 58 degrees. I put it there for two nights waiting for my fridge space to clear up. And in that two nights, it basically turned into this. So it does not store well warm, especially with the bulb on. This did not happen to any of my other varieties. So I stored my Ad Rem as well as Super Parrot this way, and they were completely fine. The Mystic Van Ike did not store well. And because of that, it got knocked into this secondary category. I would have definitely grown it again, honestly, if it weren't for that. But, you know, I need that flexibility in case if I run out of cooler space. Um, and it's just one of those things where there are plenty of other pretty pink mauve tulips that I can also trial too, right? But, you know, this would uh, this would also be the same for like a salmon man Ike where apparently it just does not store as well. And this is feedback that I've gotten from another flower farmer. So from a cost perspective, it's actually pretty cheap. It's 28 cents a bulb. So it falls into that alibi ad rem range and therefore it makes it a relatively profitable tulip. So it might be something for you to consider if you're interested in that kind of color or that kind of growth habit. Um, fourth one is cabana and I do have a cabana over here, not the best cabana, but still a cabana. And this is a parrot tulip. So when this opens, it opens really, really big. Parrots typically are, you know, pretty popular, especially with florists. So, um, you know, I would say that the curb appeal for me was a four out of five and you know, it's only because there are some very spectacular parrots out there. This one just didn't wow me as much. That being said, there's another grower at my co-op who grew cabana and her cabana looked a lot better than mine. Honestly, her cabana actually had like, 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 like frills. I, I don't even know how it, it almost looked like a slightly more different variety. But that being said, you know, my cabana still sold well with florists. It obviously sold well with retail. Um, people, a lot of people just have never seen a parrot, especially retail customers. So there is a lot of appeal there and you can see that these have very nice long stems, but I think that that is more of a reflection of the fact that these came from pre-chilled bulbs, 
But one thing that you do have to note is that when you look at the thickness of this stem versus the thickness of this stem, there is an obvious difference, right? And all of my, my cabana parrot stems were this thickness. It, it's not a bad thing. It's just, it's not as strong as some of the other varieties that I was talking about. So overall, you know, between that curb appeal relative to other tulips being a little bit less in my view, plus the fact that these bulbs are not necessarily cheap, I, on average, I found that these bulbs were about 44 cents. I actually paid, I think it was closer to 50 cents a bulb when I bought these. Um, it landed in that middle category. And with the parrot, I'm able to get about $1.80, $1.85 wholesale this time of year. Again, if I'm hydroponically forcing, I'm able to get upwards of $2 with florists and I'm selling retail anywhere from $2.25 to $2.50. So that's Cabana. I will not be growing Cabana again. There are plenty of other parrots to grow. That being said, the last flower in this cat or last tulip in this category is another parrot. It's called Super Parrot. And super it is because it opens up giant. So these are Super Parrots that are on like day five right now. So like, this is what it looks like when it pancakes out. This is about a day or two before getting to this stage. It's just this beautiful white with some green veining. And it, it's a very good, it's a very good um, color complement to really any other tulip, right? Like it was very easy to pair with a bright orange like this. You could pair it with a pink, you could pair it with a purple. So it's very versatile and therefore there's a lot of curb appeal to both florists, retail customers, that kind of stuff. It got dinged on stem length. And I'm actually not sure whether or not it's because the bulbs did not get enough chilling or if it's because this is just how it inherent, inherently is. But where it also gets dinged is the stem thickness, right? So you can see kind of how floppy it is. Again, this is not necessarily a bad thing, especially with floral designers who like tulips that are a little bit more dynamic. But, you know, if you're selling this retail, um, it's very likely at a certain point it's just going to droop over. And there's a lot of education that is needed with a customer to make sure they understand um, that that is something to expect. Now, from a pricing perspective, this is a little bit more expensive of a tulip. We're looking on average 47 cents. Similar to Cabana, I'm getting about $1.80, $1.85 through wholesale florists this time of year upwards of $2 hydroponically forced. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, this is a tulip or a variety where it's actually not as easy to find. Um, I, I would say that out of all of the, the, the wholesalers who I looked at, three of them had it and you have to buy in mass quantities to, to get it. So I'll grow it if I can find it in smaller quantities, but if I can't, then it is what it is. All right, so that brings me to the last group, which is not going to grow again. The first one is one that I've had a love-hate relationship with. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll see that I've posted a bit about this. It's called Foxy Foxtrot. I don't have a live one right now, so here's a photo. It is beautiful. It's this like creamy yellow. It's a little bit more bright than creamy, but it fades to cream. There's like a little bit of pink veining. It is a great event flower. It is a great flower to pair in retail bouquets. They get fives on both of those counts and curb appeal. Where it really, really gets knocked down is stem length. This is an inherently short tulip. It is a tulip that will fetch you about 14 to 15 inches if you're lucky. This is a tulip that needs a lot of cooling time. So for those who hydroponically force this tulip, um, Emily Von Trapp, who is one of the teachers of the Tulip Workshop, she says that she doesn't even pull these crates in from cooling until basically for Mother's Day. So that gives you an, an idea of how long these tulips need to cool for. And, you know, this is one of those things where at the end of the day, if I had the space, maybe I would grow it. But, um, you know, I don't have unlimited space. And why would I grow a tulip that I need to hold that long for that doesn't give me that flexibility that other tulips could give me, right? There are plenty of other creamy yellow tulips that I could be growing. So right then and there, that's been knocked off. 
from a cost perspective on average, it's 36 cents. So it's not the most expensive, but it's also not cheap. So, you know, at the end of the day, I'm not gonna grow it. Um, and I believe that the Foxtrot series as a whole um, have shorter stems. Um, that is, like, I've only grown Foxy Foxtrot. I haven't grown Foxtrot, which is a pink tulip, but I believe all of them are a little bit short. The next tulip in this category is Sweet Simone. I'm gonna talk very briefly about it because no one is carrying this. Um, this actually, this bulb came from the tulip workshop. It's a fringe tulip, so it's got these frills and it's okay. You know, I would say that the pink is a little too pink. It's almost like bubble gum pink um, or like Barbie pink, which it, it's just, it's a little too much pink for me. And you know, these, these did well because I forced them during Valentine's day. I put them into bouquets, but I found that they don't necessarily pair as easily as I thought that they would have. Um, and you can tell that the stems are a little bit thin, all that stuff, right? So, you know, tulip that was fun to grow, but not gonna grow again. The third tulip in this category is called Allison Bradley. Now, Allison Bradley is one of the earlier tulips to bloom. I don't have any because basically I forced all of them over the winter. It's a beautiful deep purple, which would have both florist and retail appeal. Where it gets dinged is the head size. Now, the head size will grow when it blooms open. The problem is, is that when you first bunch it up, the head size is so small that for retail, um, from a customer perspective, it just does not feel like a $20 bouquet, even if I put 10 in there. So that's just one of those varieties where I said, I'm not going to grow this. I don't necessarily need an early variety of that color. Um, and in place of Allison Bradley, I'm going to grow another purple uh, tulip called Curly Sue. And it's a fringe tulip, so it's not a double, but it's also got this like very deep, nice purple. So that's Allison Bradley. The fourth tulip here is called Ile de France, and this is um, a sideways growing tulip in the field. <laughs> this is the only one that was left. Um, you know, I would say that the color is, it's okay. It's a very saturated, deep, hot pink. Um, it actually is very easy to pair this in bouquets as a whole. There's just nothing great about it. You know, the head size is not super big. This is a good Valentine's Day a tulip though um but again there are plenty of other colors or varieties that you know have a similar color and that would wow me a little bit more so not something i would buy but what's going for it is that it's relatively cheaper in terms of bulb pricing um the cheapest bulb supplier i saw for this was 24 cents each that is probably one of the cheapest bulbs i've seen so if you're looking for cheap bulbs you know that might be a variety for you to grow Um, and the last, or there's two more tulips in this category. Um, the next one is called Lorenzo. So Lorenzo is one that I was honestly very disappointed with. Um, Lorenzo is a orange double and I pull this from the outside. It starts off as very, very orange, but with the sun, it started fading. The problem with Lorenzo is that it's never fully open for me. Um, when I hydroponically forced it, I got better color results off of it but long story short it just it did not do well especially with florists with retail you know i'm basically making mixed bouquets so the retail customers don't have a choice but it's just one of those tulips where it would not move with florists from a cost perspective it's pretty expensive on average it's 46 cents a bulb so there is really no reason for me to grow it again next year And last but not least, this one is honestly the most disappointing tulip and I would probably never grow anything in its family. So it is called Candy Prince. This is a, um, this is an early tulip. So a lot of people grow this because it's one of the first to bloom. The problem with this tulip is that it never gets more open than this. And when I hydroponically forced it, 
it had this like paper texture to it. It's really hard to explain, but it is just not a wow factor type of tulip. The stem length is okay. This is probably one of the longer stems of candy uh, prints that I have, but a lot of them were a lot shorter. They don't store as well in my view in, in the cooler. Um, and because of that, I probably would not grow anything else in the Prince series. Again, what it's got going for it is pricing. It is in that like alibi ad rem category. Um, on average, we're looking at 30 cents. It is an earlier variety. So if you're looking for something very, very early, you know, maybe you want to try it, but I'm not growing this one again. All of this, of course, now leads to what am I growing next year? So of the 15, I'm really just growing two varieties and perennializing another two varieties. So we'll call it four out of the 15 that I'm growing, which means that I am growing a bunch of new varieties next year. Now, my tulip order has already gone in and I bought all of my bulbs as of right now from the tulip workshop. They are pre-cooled bulbs. And the Tulip Workshop this year had very, very reasonable pricing. They are five C bulbs, so five degrees Celsius pre-chilled bulbs. And a main reason why I decided to buy from the Tulip Workshop was one, they offered very good varieties. Two, the pricing was very competitive, um, especially compared to the other wholesalers. But most importantly, what they do is they actually sort through the bulbs and they replace any rotting bulbs. So I can tell you that I spent like a ridiculous amount of time going through seven crates of bulbs that came from a supplier um, and they were like not great quality. So the fact that they, they do that first step for me, I think is totally worth it just to give them my business. And I bought 15 crates from them because that qualifies me for freight shipping, which is a lot cheaper than getting them shipped by the box. So because I'm buying by the crate, you can tell I'm buying wholesale, which means that I am buying 500 each of each variety. So therefore I have to be a lot more deliberate and thinking about, you know, what, like what is going to pair with what, when am I going to force what? So I'm going to talk more in another video about just, you know, why I'm not going to be growing field, field tulips. I will have some in the field, but those will be bulbs that are not ideal to force hydroponically. So I'm not going to be doing any in soil crates. I'm going to be doing everything in hydroponics. And the problem with hydroponics is that um, you you really need healthy bulbs. So if a bulb arrives, you know, with some penicillium and some mold, like you really don't want to be forcing that hydroponically because they'll spread more easily. So those bulbs will go in the field. And I would say that, you know, it's probably prudent to say 20 to 30 percent will probably be in that category. So right off the bat, I'm probably planting a thousand tulips in the field at a minimum. But anyway, um, here's a list of all of the tulips that I am growing next year. I wanted to highlight a couple of them. Um, some of the ones I'm really excited about, apricot parrot. I think a lot of you have probably seen this. It's a really stunning parrot. Any apricot, I think, as a whole has a lot of appeal, especially to florists and retail. Um, the other one is actually called Dreamer. Now, Dreamer is a tulip that a lot of people, I think, have also heard of. I saw it live at the co-op that I was selling at another grower's growing. I was like, oh, it's so dreamy. Um, and so this is going to be a great one for Valentine's Day. So as I think about what I'm growing for next year, you know, I put this order in before I started selling at the florist co-op, but I'm really glad that I chose certain varieties. So Dreamer is one of them. Mondial is another one. And the Mondial is like a very white, fluffy type of tulip. Um, another one called White Valley, which is, um, you know, it, it doesn't even look like a tulip. Um, here's a photo of it. But that also does really well florists. And then the last one is Belicia, which is a, um, a tulip that you need to force later. But it's also very, very pretty with a lot of layers and does really, really well with florists. So I'm really glad I have a mix that will potentially do better with florists than, you know, the mix that I had this year going into that co-op. I really didn't have a lot of colors that would be attractive to florists. I had a lot of reds, oranges bright colors, right? So next year, you know, hopefully that will shift a little bit and I'll still have some bright colors and stuff for retail. Um, the only real orangey tool that I'm growing is Delta Storm. 
Um, all the other oranges are a little bit more faded or pastel orange or, you know, fades to pink. So I think those will do really well also with florists and retail. Now, based off of what I said with my five criteria before, you can probably tell what my assessment was in terms of choosing the varieties that I did. Um, I would say that from a cost perspective, I'm looking at buying tulips anywhere from the high 20 cent mark to the mid 30s if possible. There are certain few exceptions, especially the parrots, as well as Belicia that are in the mid 40 cent range, which I think is worth it. Um, you know, I allow myself a few varieties, but on the whole, for most of the varieties, I try to keep it on average to like a 32, 30 cent, 33 cent mark. And that I feel pretty confident that, you know, nets me a, or gets me to a pretty decent profit margin with flexibility, right? So, you know, I don't want to be in a situation where I buy a bulb for like 65 cents or 80 cents, and then I'm selling it for like a dollar 80 and really I'm not making any money off of it. So that's the cost consideration for me. I would say that if you're looking to buy tulips wholesale, you know, a couple of the wholesalers, you should be looking at Netherland Bulb Company, um, Eason sent to me their list. I don't even know why necessarily. Ownings, um, ADR is another one. Leo Burby does offer farm crate sizes. I would say that of all of the wholesalers, Leo Burby is probably among the more expensive for most of the varieties. Um, but that being said, they offer tulips in 100, uh, 100 count bags. So if you're a smaller farmer, that might be worth it for you to do because they do offer a lot of varieties in that 100 count um, quantity. So something to look at, but of course you will pay up for it. And Leo Burby does also offer cooling. I bought a couple from them. You know, the, the, the tulips arrived fine. Dream Touch actually came from Leo Burby last year. It's just that, you know, their prices for me are a little bit too high. The other thing is that the Netherlands Bulb Company rep is going to visit me on Monday, so I'm probably going to buy a couple more crates, um, and I am anticipating on selling some of my bulbs um, in the late fall, um, just so that I'm not I'm not like stuck with eight nine thousand bulbs that I'm probably not going to be able to grow all on my own. So you know I'll talk a little bit more about that in. A future video but hopefully this video was helpful for you let me know what your favorite varieties are in the comments below what considerations you think about when you're choosing tulip varieties and i'll see you in the next video